I'm going to shoot this donut in Compton and remove these cars. Okay, so I'm in Compton, California, and I'm standing in, across the street from Dale's Donuts. Now, Dale's Donuts is one of those donut shops with a big donut on the roof. I think there's a couple in LA, but I saw it the other day on Google Street View, and I immediately wanted to come take a picture of it. So, I came this morning, and I stood on the diagonal corner to it, so to speak, and did a little bit of scouting. Um, and I decided that morning is probably the best time to take the shot because the, the lights were on inside the building and maybe a couple people uh, were there ordering and it's a better vibe to take the shot in the morning. So uh, that being said, the next thing I had to decide was what, uh, what type of photo am I gonna take? Um, film or digital, six by 17, six by six, you know, whatever the case may be. So. Um, over on that uh, corner over there, I did some uh, thinking, and I also did, crazy how huh? I do think, uh, I also uh, got out my iPhone app to sort of do some framing, and I'm pretty sure that I have decided on 6x17 digital. Now, it's probably actually easier to shoot 6x17 film. Um, and why is that? Well, because it's one shot, one click, and you get the whole thing. But what I want to do, and this might be a little tricky, I don't know if I can actually do it or not, but I'm going to sure give it a try, is with so many cars out here, and there were a ton out here in the morning as well, I want to be able to eliminate as many cars as I can. So what that's going to mean is taking a multiple stitched shot, you know, probably, I don't know, seven or eight shots from right to left, and then do my best to make sure that that sh particular shot is clear or as clear as possible of cars. And then when it's stitched together, um, if there's any ghosting, then Lightroom will remove that. So I should end up with a shot with maybe just a few cars in it, which would be fine with me, but this many cars just seems a little too crowded. So um, that's what I'm gonna do. Morning shot, six by 17 aspect ratio, and um, I use the app to determine exactly where to put the center at so when I set up my 100 millimeter lens, it's the lens that I came up with for the shot. When I set up the 100 millimeter lens, I'll know exactly where my starting point is, where the top of the frame is and where the bottom of the frame is. And once I have that framed up and level, then I just swing the camera over and then I start taking the shots one at a time. So hopefully it's as simple as that, but we'll see. I left the house at about 4.15 in the morning. I arrived in Compton just about 5.45. Sunrise that morning was about 6.30, so I had a little bit of time, but not a whole lot to get set up. Once I arrived in Compton, I just needed to set up the pano head and put it on the tripod. In the future, I think I'll get this done ahead of time because it did take me an extra 10 minutes just to do this. I know you really can't see in the dark what I'm doing, but let me show you what my pano head looks like. I use a wired trigger so that I reduce camera shake I remove my hands just before I take every shot. Now I like these old tripods because they have a very discreet control in each axis, front to back and left to right. So the way that I level the camera is with the image sensor level itself. The tripod being level and the pano head being level is really no help. I have found that the sensor level is most important here. This is what my shooting position looked like during the day. There really is no room on that sidewalk just in front of that grass, so it did get pretty tight. There's a very busy bus stop just to my left, and the bus just happened to stop a few minutes before I was getting ready to shoot, and a whole bunch of people got out, and I thought they were going to crowd me, but thanks to Nick Carver's tip, a reflective vest really helped. For some reason, they decided to go the other way or just stay out of my way. Okay, so what I'm doing here is just getting the basic setup done. The first thing I need to do is set up my tripod and establish my center shot. I didn't really need to bring a spot meter to this shoot, but it did come in handy because I needed to measure the difference in light between the donut and the lighting inside the shop. In order to make this shot a success, 
I'm going to need a good balance between ambient light and the lights both in the liquor store and the lights inside the donut shop. I thought the best way to make this happen is just to make sure that the ambient light that's hitting the donut is within one stop of the light that's inside the donut shop. If I shoot too soon, the two lights both in the liquor store and inside the donut shop will overpower the scene and you won't be able to see the donut. So I can't just start shooting here. I've got to wait for the perfect time to happen. Okay, so here you can see that the camera is pointing up. In the dark, I inadvertently allowed the camera to be one notch set too high. So I'm going to go ahead and loosen that and change that. So that being done, now I'm going to check my level all the way around, left to right and front and back. As I said earlier, I use the image sensor level because that is the most important is to make sure that the image sensor is level all the way around, all the way from left to right. So that's what I'm doing. So now I'm going to go ahead and manually focus on the donut shop itself straight ahead. I don't change the focus the whole time once it's set. Then I set my exposure. I decided for this shot to use F16 and ISO 400. The reason why I went with ISO 400 instead of ISO 100 was I wanted a faster shutter speed. The faster the shutter speed, the better. Okay, so I checked the time and there's not a lot of time left before sunrise. Spot me to the donut one last time just to see where it's at. And it looks like we're just about perfect. It is less than a stop difference between the light inside the shop and the ambient light hitting the donut itself. I know it doesn't look like that in the video, but trust me, through the camera, everything looks good. And it's getting close to sunrise. Got to make this happen here pretty quick. So I think I'm going to go ahead and start shooting. Trying to wait for a clear shot. Checking the people behind me, they are crowding me. You can't see them, they're just outside the frame. Not quite clear yet. Got somebody crossing the crosswalk, got a bus going in front of me. Now you can see the people crowding me just behind me. They're just waiting for the light to cross. There's my first shot, and dang it, got a streak. Got to shoot again, same position. There's a second shot, looks good. That shot looks good. Let's see if I can get another one. Okay, this shot looks good. Got a partial car, checking my people to the left. Hopefully that car doesn't move. If it doesn't move, we're good. All right, it didn't move. There's another shot. Let's see if I can get another one here. Cars are crossing. Just need to get clear. Oh, got a little blur in that car. Let me take same position, see if I can get it again. Somebody in front of me. Oh, there's another shot, another blur. Let me shift just a little bit. See if I'm taking it. All right, there's a sharper shot. Now I got an SUV in front of the donut shop. Hopefully they stay there. Checking people to my left again. There's a little bit of crowd that's formed. Okay, got another shot, but the SUV moved. Hopefully Lightroom will help me there. Let's get another shot. Up, oh, got a blur. Dang it, got to do it again. Cars are still moving. Crossing in front of me. All right, let's see. Now there's another car, another person walking. Come on, you gotta get this done. Let's try it again. Okay, there's a shot. Hopefully that'll work. Let's get another one. Almost done. Probably two more shots left in the series and I'm good to go. All right, there's a little blur there. I'm not sure this is going to work. And eh, this might be a problem. And then there's the last shot. Okay, so I checked the time, and I really don't have time to do this again. The sun is going to break the horizon and ruin my whole shot. At this point, I was pretty disappointed. I thought for sure that the last two shots really messed everything up. Without a clean shot at each position... I really can't create a clean stitch. So after I downloaded all the images and eliminated the few images that were obvious mistakes, I let Lightroom do its magic. When the image finally popped up on my screen, I was happy and relieved all at once. When I looked at the image from right to left, I was just shocked at the good job Lightroom did. I did have a little bit of motion blur from the cars on the left, but when I set up this shot in my mind, I told myself that it was okay to have a little bit of motion blur in a few cars. 
I just didn't want the whole frame filled up with blurred moving cars because you wouldn't have been able to see the donut shop itself. I did check this image several times for stitching errors and I wasn't able to find any. The combination of my pano head being nearly perfectly level, the nodal point being set correctly, and Lightroom just doing an awesome job here made for a perfect stitch. There is one anomaly here that it did take me a while to notice. If you look just to the left of the donut, the two traffic lights you see, one is green and one is red. That is impossible. I could probably find a green light in one of my other shots, but just for fun, I'm going to go ahead and leave it this way. I think it just adds to the story of this photo. The final image itself is huge. It's almost 20,000 pixels wide. I gotta be honest, the picture itself really isn't that great. I mean, I like the photo, but it's not going to win any contests. When you zoom in, there's a bunch of little details that really add to the story of this photo and just make it fun to look at up close. Starting with the hanging shoes on the utility wire. I laughed when I saw that. And there's another pair just to the left, right there. And then if you go down all the way to the left, just the details are just amazing. From the liquor store sign, you can see the bus stop sign, everything is really sharp. The lights on the liquor store didn't really overpower the scene. Super sharp. You can see a car pulling into the liquor store. People walking to the liquor store to get breakfast or whatever they're doing. The vacant storefronts with the graffiti on the windows. The old newspaper machines, graffiti on the curb, the posted bills on the signal pole, the people having a conversation just on the side of the donut shop, a little bit of motion blur, just perfect. Looks like they're all talking. You can see the donuts inside the donut shop. Everything is just really sharp. You can read the signs across the wall there. I can go on and on, but I'm just really happy with the outcome of this photo. This file should produce a print up to about six feet. This one's going to be really fun to print. All right, well, that about wraps it up. Thanks for coming along, and I will see you next time.